I'm gonna attempt to try to do this quit note without my glasses. I was at the hot site and they got all fogged up. In this week's quit note, we're gonna talk about secure coding. And what this means is making sure that when we code and when we build applications, it is secure. So when we think about developing things, building applications, writing code, how do you actually prioritize security? How do you make sure security is a part of that process? And this is a huge thing in the industry. In fact, the CSSP exam just added a whole section about secure coding in the latest CSSP exam update. And in this video, we're gonna talk about one sort of element or way that we can ensure that when we write code and we write our applications, it's secure. This question is all about input validation, which again is a very important practice in secure coding. So input validation is just what it sounds like. We are validating input. What input you ask? User input. So what happens is we have a lot of, especially web facing applications that allow users to actually type things in. So there's a field where a user can actually enter things. So for example, you and I do this every day when we log into our favorite e-commerce site. We're actually typing in our username and our password. We're typing in our credentials. What happens is in the web application when we input things, it's actually going to query a backend database that is going to perform an action or a command or actually pull information. So imagine if you were a malicious user and you wanted to you know, pull more information from the database than you're supposed to or you wanted to perform a command that you're not supposed to. You could actually create a malicious script or input and put that into the application. So when we do that, when attackers do that, that's called code injection. Very important word and very prevalent attack. And input validation is when we validate what input is actually being put in. So input validation is a way to defend or prevent code injection. So let's look at this list and find out which one of these are examples of uh, blacklisting. Excuse me, input validation. Starting with the first one, blacklisting. Blacklisting is when you, just what it sounds like, you are basically saying, okay, these specific characters in our input are not allowed. So I'll give you an example. You don't have to sort of be a, a SQL database uh, admin to understand this example. So SQL is a very common sort of language that we use to query databases. There is a very specific character that you're gonna use when you um, are carrying out what we call a SQL injection attack. So an example. So the point here is, this is again, a malicious script that's actually gonna pull more information from the SQL database than we're supposed to. So if blacklisting characters, we're gonna say, you know what, we shouldn't be allowed to type in apostrophes, right? That is risky, that is dangerous script that we don't want to be allowed in. So what happens is if we see this, we're gonna block it. We're gonna produce an error message or we're gonna drop the apostrophe. So for example, if your name is O'Neill, guess what, the apostrophe gets dropped and you have to apologize to all of your Irish ancestors. All right, so that's it. There's the answer right there, blacklisting. Ah, of course the answer is not blacklisting. I just read the question wrong. Which of the following is not an example of input validation? So that's a lesson to you guys. Read the question carefully, right? So if I missed the word not, I would have picked A and moved on. But in fact, what you want to do is actually, if it's the right answer or example of input validation, you want to put, put a little X next to it and then keep going. And the one with the check mark that is not, that's the right answer, okay? Let's do the next one, whitelisting. If blacklisting is basically saying we're not allowing very specific characters, whitelisting is allowing very specific characters only. So what we mean by that is if somebody is typing in um, a form to fill out their shipping address and they have a little space to input uh, for their uh, state you know, uh, uh, mailing address, we're gonna expect 50 some odd sort of state abbreviations, right? So anywhere from Alabama to Maryland to DC, right? We're expecting just those abbreviations that we know are true and good. Anything outside of that, not gonna happen, right? So even if you sort of mess up slightly and you write the DM instead of MD, DM me by the way, we're gonna block it, right? We're gonna block it. All right, that is 
whitelisting because we're allowing only specific things that we are uh, know to be good and true. So again, whitelisting, very good example of input validation. That's not the right answer. How about fuzzing? So fuzzing is actually a very, very important part of secure coding, but it's not input validation. Secure coding, um, part of it is sort of running tests, right? It's running tests on your code, and that's exactly what fuzzing is. So fuzzing is actually fuzz testing when you throw a whole bunch of random input at an application to see how it responds. You know, does it crash, right? Does it respond in another negative way? But again, fuzzing is more about testing. It doesn't fall under the umbrella of input validation. So we know fuzzing is not input validation. It's the right answer. How about D, maximum character length? Well, we know just by default that this is an example of input validation. So what happens here in maximum character length is you're saying, okay, the input can only be you know, 10 characters long. We do this to prevent attack called buffer overflow. Buffer overflow is basically when you have a input or a field that is longer or larger than the uh, memory was expecting. So what happens is you sort of clip the, the buffer that was actually put on uh, to accept the data and you expose parts of the memory that you weren't supposed to. An attacker can sort of, again, pull more information than they're supposed to. They can cause the system to crash and do other malicious activities when uh, parts of the memory are exposed that they're not supposed to be. All right, so again, we are saying we're gonna truncate or we're gonna give an error message uh, when our input is longer than a certain prefix length, okay? So again, maximum character length, another example of input validation. All right, so just to recap, blacklisting, whitelisting characters, and maximum character length are all examples of input validation. Fuzzing is more about testing. Here's a really easy way to think about it. Input validation is like garbage in, garbage out. So if we allow garbage in from the outside, guess what? On the back end, some crazy bad things are gonna happen, right? So how do you prevent garbage from going out and bad things happening? You just block what's coming in. That is input validation. So thanks for the opportunity to talk about something as important as secure coding. Hope you found it was helpful. Hope you learned something. And we'll see you next week on Quitna. And next week, uh, hopefully my glasses will be unfogged. I'll go uh, to a cold site to speed up the process.